finally, we will have Kamisha to introduce the last workshop of this year's conference. So go ahead and take it away, Kamisha. Thank you, Mindy. Today, I'll be presenting the Self Advocacy Impact Lab. Our next and final <coughs> workshop is the Self Advocacy Impact Lab. Mass West Region Self Advocacy in partnership with Mass Advocacy, sorry, Mass Advocates Standing Strong is excited to introduce Self-Advocacy Impact Lab, a hands-on intensive experience in which self-advocates learn, can learn and experience the power of social change communication by creating change from the ground up. Participants will have a chance to engage in a discussion and start learning some of the unique strategies and tools that this group will <clears throat> use to create meaningful campaigns for change. Bring your ideas and be ready to learn. Now, please welcome our presenters, Amber Patel, Stephen Toby, Jenna Lewis, Kat Stone, Irene Morrison, Donna J, and Francisco Halatis. Thank you, Kamisha. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just give a second here to get our PowerPoint up and then we'll get started. <clears throat> Great. Sarah, if you could advance us to our welcome slide. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome, welcome ask. Misha said this is the self app the Impact Club presentation. And thank you so much for joining us. My name is Amber Patel. I am a coordinator for Massachusetts West Street and self advocacy And one of the folks that will be, be supporting the Impact Lab. And, I mean, I'm just going to give, give an opportunity here for the rest of our presenters and supporters to in, introduce themselves. Oh, so uh, can we start with Stephen Toby, please? Hi, my name is Stephen Toby, and I am one of the founders of the Self-Advocacy Impact Lab. Hi, I'm Fran, and I use the pronoun T, M, and Day, and I am on the mass board. <clears throat> Catherine, how about you go next? My name is Catherine Stone, and I am one of the um, people that um, started the Impact Lab when it first came out. Of it. Irene? My name is Irene Morrison. I started the, I do the Impact Lab. Oh, Donna J. Mm. <laughs> Hey, Donna, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Donna J. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm on the board with uh, Mass Advocate. Uh, thank you. Jenna Lewis? Hi, I'm Jenna Lewis. I am one of the founding members of the South Advocacy and Tough Lab. Uh -huh.
And Brian, I don't know if you yeah. or, or any of the other coordinators would also like to introduce yourselves. Yeah. We ran out of spotlights. So um, <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kramer. I am the statewide coordinator with Mass. I'm happy to uh, be a part of this. And we're excited to start this new relationship with the West uh, Self-Advocacy Group. And uh, we'll be doing this uh, monthly Self-Advocacy Impact Lab, picking up from what they started and uh, mm -hmm. trying to do this statewide as a collaboration between mm -hmm. us. So we're really excited to get that started here. <laughs> Um, so I will just quickly run us through so we know what we're getting into here. The agenda for today is we will talk about what Impact Lab is, some of our inspiration, our goals for the project, the strategies we're going to use. And then once we've talked about those strategies, we're going to have a, a discussion and some activities where you get a chance to try them. And then we'll have some time for question and answer at the end. Okay. So we'll first talk about some of the legacy of activism that inspired him in that club. I'm going to hand it off to our first self-advocate presenter, Irene, take it away. What do you want me to read, Amber? Just read what's on your script. Okay. All right, and we'll make sure we advance the slide here. Go ahead, Irene. Protest and activism has been always been part of self advocacy movement. Movement for the longer, larger disability rights movement. We are inspired by self advocates. Self advocates, um, activisms who came before us these act today one of the most sig well significant I'm having, I'm having trouble saying that word significant significant pro p p r o protest protest in the movement history was the 504 sit-in. 504 sit-ins sit are the lar lar largest, largest non-violent. I don't know that word but besides the violent. Demonstration. Occupation. Occupation of the federal building in the United States history. Protesters on OCCU. Occupied. Occupied the San Francisco build federal building <coughs> for 25 days in order to pursue the Secretary Second. of Health, Education and Welfare to I E N enact in enact section 504, 504 of the 1976 Rehabilitation Act. These are a R E regulations regulations that would make sure that people with disabilities had equal access to federal federal buildings, programs, and services that offered had denied it by more than four years, desperate advocacy from 
Oh boy. Disability rights. Disability right support groups. The protests. P R O. Protest. Protest. I know this word. I don't know this word. U S U C C. Succeeded. Succeeded. Um, section 504 was signed in April 28, 1977. Thank you, Irene. Oh, thank you, because reading those words, I had dyslexia, and that really. So. You did great. So we'll move to the job. <laughs> Go ahead, Jenna. Thank you, Amber. There are many parts of American life that weren't covered by the Rehabilitation Act, non-discrimination law. It did not apply to entities that didn't receive federal funds under Section 504. Later, this act was recognized by Judy Human and Ed Roberts as part of the Civil Rights Statute for People with Disabilities. They, this paved the way for the 1990 American with Disability Act, or ADA. United States Representatives Tony Coelho of California and Silvio Conte of Massachusetts introduced H.R. 4498, the House of Representatives version of ADA in 1988. In September of that same year, Senators Weicker and Harkin, Representative Coelho, and several other senators, representatives, and advocates testified about discrimination based on disabilities during hearings on the American with Disability Act. This was a rare joint session of both the House and Senate. Justin Dart had been appointed to be a member of the National Council on Disabilities by the President. He took a leading role in building support for this proposed new law. He traveled to all 50 states, brought people with disabilities together, and compiled evidence of the difficulties and discrimination that they faced in their everyday lives. They created a record of conditions based by persons with disabilities in the United States. This record became known as the Discrimination Diaries. The Americans with Disability Act became the law of the land on July 26, 1990, when it was signed by President George H. W. Bush. The ADA is one of America's most comprehensive pieces of civil rights legislation. It guarantees that people with disabilities have the same opportunities as everyone else to participate in the mainstream of American life, to enjoy employment opportunities, to purchase goods and services, and to participate in state and local government programs and services. More than 30 years after its passing, many advocates are now looking to expand and update ADA. Thank you. Thanks, Genevieve. Um, we are going to now fast forward a little bit later in time uh, to something more recent, but still about uh, 
10 or 15 years ago when we um, when this went into effect. But with us today is Donna Jay. Uh, Donna Jay is going to talk a little bit about her involvement with Change the Name. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to share a little clip that some of you may have seen. Um, I know that there's many people in the audience today that probably could give us a whole history lesson on Change the Name mm -hmm. and different things. I see a lot of advocates in the uh, in the audience attendee list here that I know we're very much a part of this. So uh, just to set that yeah. back, uh, set us back to that time, we're gonna move on to the next slide and uh, share a little little clip of uh, some of the, the advocacy around Change the Name. The word retardation is coming under attack tonight by a group who wants it removed from the title of a state agency. FABC's Charlie Austin shows us several people with developmental disabilities use civil disobedience to call for the name change. What do we want? When do we want it? About 16 people, some students at the Life Experience School in Sherbourne, teachers and parents want the R word removed from the Department of Mental Retardation. Change the name. Led by Louis Randa, the Civil Disobedience Act of handcuffing themselves together, blocking the Statehouse main gate, got four of them arrested. I mean, we don't have a Department of Juvenile Delinquents. I believe it's called the Department of Youth Services. We have a Department of Mental Health, not a Department of Mental Illness. I, I don't understand why this has gone on this long. Since 1987, DMR has had its own title to separate it from the Department of Mental Health. DMR Assistant Commissioner Larry Tomino told me they have been meeting with other groups about the name change. Have some of our advocates and board members fought very hard in 87, and they're not sure they want to see the name change at this time. Demonstrators say they hope today's protest will turn talk about a DMR name change into a change they can live with. Charles Austin, WBZ, 4 News. Thank you. 
Tanya Stonehouse, and I'm an employee of the data department. I'm not going to say what, it, what, what the entire name means, but I will say that in my experience, the people I love and I care about and respect want the same change, and I would support that. I don't want people identify me like I use my own Change the name. 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 Change the name to give people more dignity and a better life instead of giving names. Label dirt instead of people. We all have dignity. We all have a life. Please, change the name so people can feel better and not feel like they're being discriminated. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> many states have changed the name. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank well. you. Um, and so I'm sure that definitely uh, brought back some memories for people that haven't seen that in a while. But that mm. is, you know, just goes to show kind of uh, a group coming together, people from all over. Um, Donna, could you tell us a little bit about um, some things that you did during the Change the Name? Well, when I did the Change the Name, I got some advocate people that join us, like people and things like that. And they hold, they hold the signs and they say, I want to change DDS to... DMR to DDS? DMR. And then we had to go to the state house. First, they, everybody wants the name change. And then the we went to the state house, then after the state house, it took a long time to get where we are today. The name changed and changed the right. name from me. And uh, so another yeah. question for you, Donna. Um, so was this was this something that just, you know, one organization did? That no, it was a lot of organizations. A lot of groups? A lot of, a lot of them, there. yes. So they all came together over over all of this, huh? Right, yeah. That's great. And and so how many were there a lot of you said a lot of people were involved? Um, yes, a lot of people were involved. People advocated in different ways. They went yes. to the state house, they did protests. Yeah. Um, and they broke and took right and that took a long time. That's but right. So, where we won. They said um, that video, I think we we're looking at some of that video was from uh, 2000, from an event in 2000. And then I believe it went, the name change went in effect in 2009. And there was right. advocacy for the change yeah. that was happening, it sounds like as far back as 87. So you're right. Yep. So does change just happen overnight? No, no. Oh. It took a while, take a long time. Right. Put this step. Well, and thank do you. This. Thank you, Donna. Um, You're welcome. And so, thanks to many people that were a part of that advocacy and that movement. Yeah. And to bring us uh, to this next topic, we wanted to just talk quickly on a little bit about uh, supported decision making. As you just learned from the prior workshop before this, if you didn't get to see it, uh, you'll definitely get to see it in the other recording. But with us today to talk about uh, the next topic is Fran from the Mass Board. Hi, Fran. Hello. So Fran's here to tell us a little bit about um, his experience with supported decision making. Can you share a little bit about your experience with supported decision making and some of the things you did to advocate for the bill and the testimony? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, like on the slide so it says, my choice, my right. Um, I testified at the hearing for support decision making about how it's important. Um, support decision is very important when it comes to talking about day-to-day -day decision making when it comes to when you all are here right now at our conference when we all have a decision to make with support around there, like you had a choice to come to our conference and how that decision, like, should I come to this event? And I'm sure that you guys um, 
all had needed help making a decision to make in this. And I, for once, um, needed help making decisions on a day-to-day life um, when it came to helping with me make medical decisions and making, helping making them make right choices in food. Um, but also when you have support decision, um, it also keeps you from having your rights, um, keeping your rights as a person um, to making sure you have, keeping your rights, but also keeping um, the, sorry, the keeping, making sure you um, are not anything taken away from you, but also having support around you because that little extra support goes a long way. Thanks, Fran. And can you share a little bit about some of the things you did to prepare for the testimony? Yeah, I had a meet um, some um, with some legislative teams. Um, Aaron Gomez is on team um, to talk to them about how strongly we um, uh, want this bill to pass. Um, I had to meet with Anna Krager. She is part of the MDDC, which stands for the Massachusetts Development and Disability Council. Team, um, she's part of their legislative team um, to come up with a testimony for um, support decision making to present at the hearing. I had to, um, also that was with Kim Plow and Ann Fratt, um, other board members for, for the Mass. Advocate Standing Strong Board. And we had to make sure that like to have our voice heard because this bill is a very important bill because we want to make sure that people with disabilities are having their rights aren't taken away and also making sure they are having decisions made because and also with support around it i'm sure that you all would want to keep your rights but also have support around it because in life we all um make decisions day-to-day life like i make decisions on should i um make um going to this doctor to go um giving me the right test result or should i go making the to go on the bus if this is going to be a right transportation for me or should i get the right um thing for my isp but that's when you have support around it and you're still make you're still getting you're still making decisions for yourself but you're also having support around it in with that being said, that's where support decision makes it come in handy because you're still making decisions for yourself, but you're also having that support around you. And it's not just that one that um, one person that's supporting you. You have multiple people. You could have a doctor that's being on your support team. You could have your sister, your brother. You can have an advocate. You can have many people on your support team Thank and you. there's no set number. Thank you. And any anything else you'd like to share about the testimony you created or that like what you did to do all that? Um, I, I went through what's a presentation um, that was wonderful that was brought to you by Mass that was explained through from Ann and uh, Bridget and Kim explaining what support decision making and my support and I um, were talking actually about guardianship because there was, I was having trouble with uh, medical decisions I was making. And- And you shared about that during the testimony? Yeah, I was sharing about that and I told my support that I didn't want my rights taken away. And I I brought this up to their attention. 
And we're starting to, we started to use it ever since. And ever since then, it's been a very, very helpful tool to have. So if I can use it, so can you guys. And I strongly think you guys all should be um, using this tool because it's a very, very helpful tool to have and bring it up to your support. Thank you, Fran, for sharing a little bit about that. And, you know, just like the change the name um, and the advocacy around that, it's not one group, one organization, it's everyone. It's all, you know, self-advocates throughout Massachusetts, uh, allies, supporters, everyone uh, makes a difference in, in getting this stuff to happen. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that, Fran. I think we're ready to, to move on to the next slide. And now we're gonna hear from Catherine. Making a real lasting change. We want to- Let's make sure we advance the slide before we start, Kath. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Making real lasting change. We want to make things better for as many people as possible. Not just a certain group or organization or just for a short time. Learning and sharing ideas for a better world, Impact Lab is designed to include anyone and everyone who wants to help create change. Our meetings are all about listening, discussions, and working together to get to the most impactful solution or plan, plan of action. Honor the tradition of activism in the self-advocacy movement. We admire and respect the work of dedicated self-advocates who came before us and we want to continue the work of making an equal, commu equal communities for everyone. Our strategies. Self, self Advocacy Impact, Impact Lab is about pa passion with a passion with a plan. We will use a step-by-step -step series of discussions, strategies, sessions, brainstorming activities, and measurement tools to create create campaigns for change. Real change takes planning, collaboration, and open minds. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Stephen. Now that we have discussed the strategy behind the Impact Lab, we want to invite you to try some of our activities. All three activities, we will be brainstorming about the same problem we like to take action on. First up, the five whys. Stephen, can we wait for those? Yep. Go ahead. First up, the five whys. This activity uses questions to help us think deeply about the issues we see in the world. I'll need a volunteer from the audience to help me with this. So if we can get some, some hands up in the chat, we'll select somebody to work, work with us on this. We got somebody with their hand up here. Kim. Okay. All right. Hey, so Kim. Kim. Yep. Keep going, Steve. Thank you for volunteering. I'm going okay. to ask you to think about a problem you would like to take action on. We will use your example through all our all of the activities. Please tell me what the problem is in one sentence. I think the biggest problem is communication. Okay. 
Thank you for that. Now Amber is going to ask you five questions that may seem strange or even silly at times, but please go along with it and we'll discuss at the end. Um, Kim, before I get into our five wise question, I'm going to ask you to be a little bit more specific about what you mean when you, you say that communication is a problem. So can you think about one specific area where communication is a problem that you would like to change and take some action on? I think communicating with case managers seems to be a problem. Okay. So your issue is, is that sometimes we have trouble with communicating with case managers. Am I correct in that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we'll, we'll start. So Kim, why do you believe that, that sometimes we have trouble communicating with case managers? I think we have trouble communicating with them sometimes because they don't really listen sometimes. Why do you think these managers fail to listen sometimes? I think a good example I could give is that sometimes they would try to schedule my ISP without me. And I would say something like, you're not going to have your, my ISP without me, I'm, and I'm not going. And why do you feel like they're, they're not involving advocates in these processes sometimes? Why do you feel like things like that happen? Um, I think things like that happen because they don't realize how self-advocates uh, have the ability to s schedule things, uh, even though it's slower or even though they may not fully understand their life, they want to make it so that in general myself can decide whether they can be there or not. Um, a good example I could give you is I have a job. So if I can't work, if I can, if I'm working on a Monday, I can't be at the ISP and they don't pay attention to my schedule. They only want to pay attention to theirs. And why do you think that is Kim? And that sometimes we're not taking into account uh, the obligations that you might have, have when trying to, to work on things like ISPs? I think one of the reasons, and I, I know that this could be a pressing one for them, is they say they have a quota over the reach, but they need to let us as self-advocates know when that quota is, I think. And I think they also need to realize uh, that they're not really communicating with us. I know it's harder with COVID now, but communication with any uh, self-advocate, I find is key. Um, I think in general, they just don't trust the, the, the amount of communication. Uh, like it was said in the SDM um, presentation, um, they don't feel listened to. They don't feel like they're being heard. And I don't feel like I'm being heard. <laughs> one, one last this question. Why don't won't you feel, feel like you're being listened to? Um, I really don't feel like I'm being listened to um, because the, my staff and my DDS worker, they use the term a lot. Um, low staff or uh, deadlines or um, lack of communication. In, in my opinion, communication works in both directions. And whether you have lack of staff or uh, lack of supports for me, you need to communicate something like that to me. And I don't think it works well when there's a lack of communication. Um, but I also think that if you're gonna use high terms with people with disabilities, why, how would they understand? So the communication really lacks when they assume that you don't understand, but yet they're using big words and yet they're not communicating what their problems are and why. So I think that, again, communication is key. And if you're not gonna communicate 
how we as self-advocates or even a person with a disability can make things a little different and explain it. We get frustrated really easily and our anxiety gets set off. And then they don't understand that. Thank you so much for, for doing thing about a activity with me, Kim. And I just, just want to point out the purpose of, of the, this activity is in just those five questions that I asked, look how deeply we were able to delve into that problem and really get to the roots and causes is of what's happening there, all of, of which are things that we could potentially take action on in the future. Thank you for that. That was a wonderful example. And we're going to move on to, on to our next, next activity, which Stephen is going to introduce. Next, let's watch this video about our next brainstorming tool called How Might We Questions? When we invite people to brainstorm with us, we create How Might We Questions. We do this so often, we have to shorten it. We call How Might We's simply HMWs. Let me give you an example. Right now, I'm working on creating new bathrooms for India. So what about the question, how might we redesign public toilets in India? Well, that's a little bit wide. Let's try to narrow it. What about how might we create a doorknob for Indian toilets that's clean, safe, and invites people in? Wow, so this was a little too narrow. Let's find an in-between. How might we create a sense of safety in public toilets? Well, that works. See, it takes a little bit, but this one allows the right amount of creative freedom. When we invite when we invite people to. Okay, so we're gonna as, stay on or how might we, we slide? As you can see, how might we questions are made to get our brains activated and help us start to think about potential ways to make things better. Now that we know about how might we questions, Let's apply them to the problem we talked about in the last activity. Yeah. So I'm gonna give an example here and we'll all remember that that problem when we talked about it in the last activity was Kim mentioned having trouble effectively communi communicating with um, case managers or service coordinators. So an example of a how might he question in that situation would be how might we create? How might we create and start using language that is easy for our self advocates to understand during DDS proceedings? So these questions are really designed and to get us thinking about solutions. Um, Stephen, do you want to continue? I need some help from the audience on this. Does anyone have a how might we question? Please raise your hand if you want to share a question or put it in the chat. So just a reminder, your question should be related to the issue of communicating with service coordinators. And they're gonna start with the phrase, how might we? So we'll take a look at the chat and Hopefully some questions will start popping up there. Uh, Looks like it, maybe Kim's got a hand up. Am I right, Brian? Yeah, Kim is still up, I think. Go ahead, Kim. Did you want to share how might we question? Sure. Um, you can advocate for what your wants and needs are. And if they're not listening, you can always ask someone else that you trust to help you along the way. Um, remember that it's your voice, it's your choice. So 
even if you need to find someone else to help you advocate for change and advocate to understand the logistics, um, you should really reach out to that person that you trust. Um, it helps to make a difference in what you're not understanding and what's causing you to have setbacks. That's a really good example, Kim. So the way that you might put that into a, a question for the purposes of, the, of this activity would be, how might we find um, outside supports from within our, our networks of support to help us, us in communicating with caseworkers? That would be a great example of the question. Anybody else have an example of how might we question? Uh, Someone named Derek Spears wrote in the chat saying, what do you do if DDS uses power play? Um, so I think what, what Derek is implying is that sometimes it feels, feels like caseworker may have more power than you do in a, a situation. Um, and so the question that we might look at there is, how do we create situations where every, everyone is equal and communicates as equals? Uh, we have hands up from Mary. Mary. Okay. Hi, it's Stacy. Um, I'm with I'm with Mary, but I'm totally blind. And along my lifetime, I feel controlled. The people who are sighted or have other disabilities make me feel like I have no voice because I can't see, so I have to rely on people to help me do, like read, write, drive. But if getting to know me, they'll see that I can speak for myself. So how do you get your point across that you can do things and speak for yourself when people think you can't because you can't see? Great question. And Mary, so how might... That we empower our people to show that they are capable. And it looks like we also will have a hand up from Kristen. Was there a question? Uh, Kristen, do you have a question for us? I think they're having difficulty connecting the audio, it sounds like. Um. If Mindy has uh, her hand up. Mindy? Well, okay, so this might be something. Um, how do you prove people wrong in terms of like showing them that you can actually do something without them having to guess that you can or can't do it? I think that's an excellent ex example of how might we question. Thank you so much Rich, for, for your great question. Okay, so move on. Uh, there's a question in the q and I don't know if you want to bring that up, Valerie. Uh, Andrew Carr said, how are housing issues resolved or advocated for within this group? Um, Andrew, housing may be some... Something that Impact Lab takes on, it'll just be a matter of time to find out whether that's that's an issue we address. Yes, but it's definitely an important one. All right. Thank you so much for those examples of questions. Stephen, do you want to wrap up this, this exercise for us? Hey, for our final activity, the gut check, We'll talk about all the possible challenges and opportunities we would come across while trying to solve our problem. 
or change things? What positive or negative things might happen along the way? So again, then we'll ask, ask for some more and tear share, but we want you to remember that we're thinking about the issue of creating better communication in which service coordinators or other or staff supporter. So if we decide to take this issue on, what are some of the positive things that come out of that? What are some of the challenges that might they come up? Amber? The, those answers in the chat. Jenna, did you want to add something? Um, there is a question that hasn't been answered. I'm sorry, missed that. Um, I think Mary G. Yeah, so Mary gave us an example of a, a question, but I just want to reiterate that the point of the how might the activity isn't actually to answer the questions yet. It was just to ask questions and think about them because in those questions are potential solutions to the issues that we're talking about. So I'm sorry if, if that was a little confusing, Mary. These, these activities are, are meant to be a little, little challenging and get us really thinking, but I hope that helped. Oops. So again, in, in terms of the gut track activity, if we're looking at, at creating communication with service coordinator things that could come out of that what are some of the challenges that we might face let's put those, those in the chat and we'll take a look so as we're waiting for answers to come in I'll just give Give an example. So an example. Andrew, Catherine, you want to give an example? Yeah. Um, an example for like a positive, well, a negative is that sometimes when people get service coordinators, sometimes the service can service coordinator, it sometimes changes. You sometimes have a different coordinator. So sometimes you the negative with this would be like, how would we get to the service coordinator to speak up? if we work on it. Yeah, so staff don't run over it could be a challenge. Great example. Thank you, Kat. You're welcome. So Kat gave us the example of service coordinators change a lot. So it can be hard to communicate it with them for that reason. Anybody else? We'll have examples of good things or bad things that could come out of, of working on an issue like this one. Um, can I just give an example? This is just an example. Sure. If someone doesn't have DBS services and apply for DBS services and are told that because of funding, they won't be getting services. What do they do? Yeah, that's a, a huge example of a, a challenge that's involved with any time you want to change um, really any government agency and the way they work is a lot of those decisions are driven by funding. I've seen some other things popping up in the chat. Someone take a look at that. Uh, so Catherine says bosses change a lot. That's true. Um, as an example of a, a positive, Kim said uh, that it will help people feel encouraged. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Anytime we're building better or communication, we're building um, a more encouraging place to be. I have um, another idea. I've heard a lot of 
awesome presentations throughout this past week. What if we put together a presentation to present to, you know, different organizations, different agencies, like nothing about us um, um, advocacy kind of presentation. So they can see our stories and learn from our stories. What do you think? I think, I think perhaps that is one of the ways is that Impact Lab will work on something. And if that's something folks are interested in doing, they should come and check it out. All right. So we're actually a little, little bit over your time here. So Stephen, do you want to wrap us up? Thank you. Having a discussion about this ahead of time makes us better prepared to take action. If we are prepared for challenges, they come easier to handle. That is our presentation. Thank you for listening. We would love to answer any questions that you have. And as I said, I know we're running in a little bit late here, but we do want to answer your questions if folks have them. Not. But seeing much in the way of questions. I'm yeah. hoping that means that we presented everything super clearly and you got, I still don't have any questions about it. Amber, my friend who's listening next to me, she has a question. The one I told you that wanted to start self advocacy, she has a question. Okay, what's that question, Kat? Okay, sure. My name is Barbara. I'm Catherine's sister. Well, adopted sister. Adopted sister. Adopted sister. Um, so budgeting is something where you're going to want a little bit more individual support, or, um, and that's just a little bit out, outside of what we're talking about in this, this discussion, okay. but I would encourage you to um, take a look at any of the, the supports that you're getting, and if you have coordinators or staff, um, or certainly reach out to self-advocate to see staff in general, and we can try to provide some support around that, but not quite related to Impact Lab, but thank you for the question. All right. All right, Brian, I just wanna double check that I'm correct here. We're not seeing any questions come through, right? Uh, there's a couple of hands up, I think. If Who's ever doing q and want to bring them up? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing that on my end. Uh, Mary DeBonte. Hi. Um, uh, Stacy asked a question earlier and um, I know it was for the exercise, uh, to come up with questions, but uh, I would really appreciate it if we could answer that question. Um, so can you give me a reminder what the question was? Um, 
Stacy, do you want to say your question again? Excuse me. I need help. What? You have to unmute me. You're unmuted. No, we, we can hear you. Hear you. Oh, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, do you, you want to share your question I'm the again? One you call, I'm the one you called Miriam. Stacy, I'm totally blind. And in my lifetime, people want to control what I say, what I do. I can't see. Like, I have no voice. Even people with disabilities, I feel that I get dismissed. So what do you do in that case to show people you can speak for yourself and just because you're blind, you don't have to be controlled because people have to help you with reading, writing, driving, whatnot requires vision. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think you're in, in the right place. It's being in, in self-advocacy. Um, and if you're really interested in, in change, things and changing the way that uh, sort of society works and impact lab might it be something you want to come work with us on and do any of our, our presenters want to add to that well i, I know just start stand your grounds and stand up on st and continue advocating for yourself. Well, I, I know that some disabilities are more respected than others. And why do people have, need late, have labels and, and certain companies that work with people with disabilities, it takes a long time to change and why? I mean, it's a little, it's a little bit off-putting. We all have honest, disabilities and we all have something to contribute. To be honest, um, I don't think that a lot of people with disabilities aren't treated that way um, because we all get treated the same way. Um, it's just a matter of just how it's presented and you just have to continue advocating and advocating. Like I had a meeting where um, I had a like, keep advocating for what I wanted to express for my housing situation and be firm with um, the, the team that I was with. And if, you, if you're if you really compassionate about something and you really are striving for something and you keep saying what you want over and over and over again, they'll eventually get what you want. So what I'm trying to say to you, a little advice is to continue fighting for what you believe in by advocating over and over and not giving up. That's what advocacy is all about, is keep fighting for what you believe in. Can I say something? And also share your story because everyone has a story and it's important to have that story to share. And also keep advocating um, Use your voice because no one can have a power to use your voice but you. And it's very important that you use that voice and advocate for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes my people just want to do it because maybe they, they people don't they don't see you for who you are and they want you to feel bad and that's when supported decision making comes into play because you have a whole support around you to help you and support you <clears throat> um, yeah friend you're right you can use do something in like SDM or you can and use the philosophy the severe of impact lab, which is if you don't don't like something, kind of on changing it. That's why we made impact lab because we wanted to make a change and make people feel better about themselves. That's right. Cat, because something's going on with her microphone. So Cat said the reason that we we created an impact lab was because we wanted it to change things. Um, That's right. All right. Um, we 
we're we're a lot over time now, but do we do we have any more hands up? No. Nope. Yeah. Great. All right. So with that, we'll move on to our very last right. thing here, here, which is yeah, if impact labs, it sounds like something that's interesting to you and you're interested in making in change and working on change. Injuring issues that you care about, um, please come and join us. Our ne our next virtual meeting will will be Wednesday, March twenty third. It's going to take place from five thirty to seven thirty. Um, the link is there on the slide. It'll also be available on both the Mass website and the West Region Self Self Advocacy website. If you have have questions about Impact Lab, especially the con content or what we will actually be doing, you can reach out to me. My name is Amber, and my con contact is there on the slide. We'll also we'll put it in the chat, or you can reach out to Mass and somebody you working on. We'll get back to you as well. So, um, but please come to. Come join us.